Welcome to the Profit Paradox. I am Greg Rillette from Ambitious.com and I am really excited that you are here today because I'm going to walk you through some of the ways that you can generate more profits in your business in a way that you have never thought about before. Meaning that we're not gonna talk about tactics and different marketing strategies and things like that. I'm going to show you how to create profits on demand by overcoming the profit paradox. And this is gonna be a lot of fun here as we go through this today. And how I think about profits is that profits are the scoreboard for our business. At the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the quarter, at the end of the year, did we win the game? Did we lose the game? If we were running an advertising campaign, for example, and we spent $500 on Facebook ads, at the end of that campaign, did we make more money on Facebook ads than we spent? Did we make less money? That is the scoreboard. We either won the game or we lost the game. If you are doing a great job for your clients and they're referring new people into your business, you're putting more points up on the scoreboard. You are winning the game. If on the other hand, you're losing clients and you're experiencing major attrition, well, the scoreboard is probably saying that you are losing the game. And so profits are the scoreboard for your business. And at the end of the day, you are either winning or you are losing. And much like in sports, profits are a result of how we play the game of the different moves that we make, the different plays that we ran, of how we reacted to uh, the other team, the other market conditions, all of those things. The result of that is, did we win or did we lose? And much like in sports, we have different plays that we can run. We have different strategies that we can run. In sports, you know, in, in, in basketball, you get the pick and roll. And, in uh, you know, are you doing a zone defense? Are you playing man-to-man? In baseball, are we doing a hit and run? Are we putting the bunt on? Are we, you know, bringing the infield in and making the play at home? Like, all of these are different plays that we can run to help us to win the game. So, in business, how we play the game is broken down by the plays that we can run. And we think that these are the things that are going to help us generate more profits in our business. Things like funnels. We could draw up a play to say, all right, let's go and let's run the funnel play and let's see if that drives more profits to our business. Let's go and run the webinar play. Let's go and write a book. Let's do a book play. Let's do a special report. Let's do email marketing. Let's do social media. These are different plays that we can draw up and run in our business. And then we have the tactics, how we execute the play. So, all right, we're going to do a funnel. Well, what is the actual tactic that we're going to run? How are we going to execute the funnel? Well, you could do something like a book funnel. If you're doing a webinar, you know, the tactic could be let's do an evergreen webinar or let's do a live webinar. Let's do a free report or a paid report. Let's do weekly emails, daily emails. Let's post videos on social media or let's post quote cards on social media or let's go live on social media. Those are all the, the tactical side of how we implement the plays that we're going to run, how we implement the playbook. And then on the top layer of it is we have strategies. Strategies like you know the offers. What's the offer that we're going to make to the marketplace to get them to uh, join our programs or buy our products? We have front end versus the back end of our business. How are we gonna bring in people and how are we going to monetize those people? Things like lead generation. Like those are the, the, the strategies that we're going to run plays to bring those strategies to life and then we're gonna take tactics to execute on the plays. And this is how most of us think. It's how I thought for the longest time, like I just need more tactics. I need I need another funnel, I need another funnel, I need another promotion, I need another ad, I need another this. Like I need more of these things and there's some truth to that. We do need some of those things to help us run our business, to grow our business, to generate leads. But the profit paradox it's thinking that you can just show up on game day and win. The profit paradox is thinking, all right, I need just clients today. I'm just going to throw up a funnel. I'm just going to throw up a, a, a free report page. I'm going to throw up a landing page. I'm going to run an ad. I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'm gonna write an email. I'm just going to, we're just going to show up on game day and win. It's thinking that LeBron James shows up 15 minutes before tip off, you know, laces up his shoes and says, all right, guys, let's play the game. And some of us are good enough and we have enough skill that some days we might be able to just show up and win. That some days we're just going to jump on a sales call and we're going to nail it. That some days we're going to put out a promotion and it's just going to be a home run. But the reality is that we have to put in the work. 
that will allow us to get to game day and perform at our best. And that's why I want to start by talking about peak performance. And a lot of people, a lot of coaches, a lot of uh, you know people in the in the space in the podcast world are talking about like we want to be peak performers. I completely disagree. We do not want to be peak performers. Peak means that there is an apex, that there is a top, and then we only get there for a short amount of time, and then we come back down. That's not how we operate in business. Now, some athletes, like football players, they probably do want to operate at peak performance. That for three hours on Saturday afternoon for college football players and Sunday afternoon for for NFL players, they do want to perform at their peak. They want to spend all week doing everything that they can so that Sunday at 1 o'clock, boom, they're performing at their peak. And then three hours later, boom, they can come crashing down and they can recover and get ready to perform back at their peak. But we're not football players. We don't just play a game once a week for three hours. As entrepreneurs, we play the game six, eight, 10, 12 hours a day, five, six, seven days a week. Therefore, we don't want to strive for peak performance. We need to strive for optimal performance. How can we be at our best over a sustained period of time? How can we perform at our optimal, at our peak for six, eight, 10, 12 hours today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day? and the next day. So that we're not just peaking for one sales call and then we come crashing down afterwards, but call after call after call, tactic after tactic after tactic, activity after activity after activity, to-do item after to-do item after to-do item, all of them get our same amount of energy, get our same amount of focus, get our same amount of attention, and we are performing at our best. We're playing our A game for a long period of time. You don't want to like, and I know, I know you've had some of these days, right? Days where you just woke up and you had this amazing, maybe it was a sales call. You just had this amazing sales call to start your day. And it just was, everything was just flowing and you were, you know, the right words were coming out and they were agreeing with everything that you said. And they're like, yep, send over the proposal. And then like an hour later, you're still struggling to start writing the proposal. You're struggling to send up the follow-up email. You're barely getting through the day. That's peak performance. You peaked during that sales call. Optimal performance is going from sales call to knocking that proposal out instantly because you have the energy, you have the performance, you have, you're on your A game, you're getting that out there, you're doing what you said that you were gonna do and then you're jumping on the next call, you're jumping to the next task, you're jumping to the next thing and every single one of these, you're performing at your best. You are your best all day. And then you know what, when you come home, You're not so drained that you can't play with your kids. You're not so drained that you can't give attention and focus and presence to your spouse. That is why we as entrepreneurs, as business owners, why we strive for optimal performance versus peak performance. Performance precedes profits. You can't execute on all those plays, on all the tactics, on all the strategy if you don't perform at your best. If you don't have the energy, if you don't have the mental capacity to execute. You will not create profits if you are not performing at a high level because you will not do the tasks necessary to grow your business. You will not do the tasks necessary that actually generate the profits in your business because when you do perform optimally, well, your energy naturally spikes. It gives you long-term endurance to push through all of the tasks. Like, look, not everything that I do on a given day, I love to do, right? Like, I I hate opening Excel spreadsheets and looking at day. Like, that's not my favorite thing to do. My favorite thing is like this. It's teaching and training and helping people to be their best, to live an ambitious life. Like I love doing this, but I know that I need to do the other things so that I, my teaching and my training can reach and impact more people. You know, I don't necessarily love doing Facebook advertising, but I know that Facebook advertising is one of the best ways to get my teaching and training in front of more people. And so if I am performing optimally, I'm able to go into the tasks that I don't necessarily love to do still with that A game mentality so that I can do the things that I love to do. So when you're performing optimally, your energy becomes contagious. No one wants to work with a person that talks like this or when you answer the phone and, oh, hey, how's it going? Oh, just just trying to survive another day. Like that's not energy 
that's going to lead to more profits. That is not, well, it is contagious. And it's going to be contagious to your prospect on the other end of the phone. Is he going to be excited to talk to you? Is he going to be excited to tell you about the problems that he has in his business and the opportunities that he has? Your energy is contagious to your prospects. It's contagious to your clients. If your energy is contagious to your clients and you're bringing that A game and you're bringing your best to perform and optimally and that's passing on to your clients, that's where referrals come from. Guys, that's more profits to your team. If you are the leader of your team and you are not bringing your A game, you are not performing optimally, how can you expect your team to perform optimally? If your team's not performing optimally, they're not being as productive as they can be. They're not doing their tasks at their A game. That's spilling on over to the, the things that they do on a regular basis. If you're not bringing your A game and your energy to your family and you're bringing them down, that's not going to allow you to recover. That's not going to allow you to have those experiences. That's not going to allow you to laugh and smile and give you joy in your life. But when you are performing optimally, you're bringing your energy, you're going to have increased productivity, you're going to have increased profits, you're going to have increased joy, you're going to have better experiences throughout your day. When you perform optimally, you show up to every call, to every Zoom meeting, to everything that you do as your best self, playing your A game. And guys, when you play your A game, profits become effortless. When you're barely getting through the day, you're not putting points up on the scoreboard. You're just not. It's really hard to do. When you are performing optimally, you give yourself the best opportunity to succeed, the best opportunity to create the best video, the best campaign, to have the best call, to write the best email, to have the best words come out of your brain so that you can produce more profits. You cannot produce optimal profits if you're operating on an empty tank. If you're not getting the sleep, if you're not taking care of yourself, you cannot, right? If Michael Jordan was, you know, slamming six Red Bulls to, you know, wake up enough to get through the day, do you think he wins all of those NBA championships? Is he the greatest player of all time? No, he can't produce optimal levels of performance on an empty tank. And guess what? You can't either because when you run on empty, you default to the easy tasks. You don't do the things that are going to move your business and your profits forward. You don't do the thing that's difficult, but that makes a big impact and a big difference and puts more points on the scoreboard. You, I'll just, I'll just keep refreshing email and maybe something will come in and I'll get motivated and excited. And, oh, if I can just like get to the end of my inbox, like is getting to the end of your inbox going to move your business forward? Is getting to the end of your inbox or some other mundane task, putting points on the scoreboard, profits? No. When you run an empty, you start to overconsume things that put you deeper and deeper and deeper into the red, that make your brain and your body go deeper into the red, that run on empty. You start guzzling down energy drinks and pounding sugar and going through the drive through and fast foods and complex carbohydrates and the buns and the pastas and the red, like all the things that don't bring your energy back up. Yeah, you get that short little spike, that little rush of dopamine that goes to your brain, but it doesn't sustain you. It doesn't get you through the day. Well, it does get you through the day, but it doesn't get you through the day in a way that you can say that you did something meaningful to put po more points on the scoreboard. When you're on an empty, it's probably because you're sleep deprived. And if you're sleep deprived, I just went through this amazing training and it was going through this research that shows that if you are sleep deprived, it's the equivalent of drinking like three to four beers on the job. It's the equivalent of working with the flu. And so if you are running on empty, what most of us do is instead of getting more rest, like, all right, I need to go to bed early tonight, or let's take a nap, or let's do some active recovery. Well, you know what we do? We, 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 tr we tell ourselves, like, let's just grind through this, and let's get less sleep. Let's pull an all-nighter. Let's stay at the office later and sacrifice time with our family. You start to sacrifice the things that matter to you instead of making them a priority. You, you know, if, if you're staying at the office later to grind through these tasks because you didn't set yourself up to perform optimally and bring your A game, well, you're, you're robbing your family of you. Your family probably also helps to recharge you, to help recover you, to give you joy. And that, that's why we do the, our business. That's why we go through all the terrible things that we have to go through as an entrepreneur to be there for our family, to create these moments. We're sacrificing time with our friends. Like, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't come to the thing today because I got to stay at the office. Well, going to the thing with your friends was probably actually going to be the thing that helped you recover, to help you go from empty to start putting more gas in the tank because those are the experiences that build you back up, that motivate you to do more. And instead, we're, you know, we're skipping the things that give us a chance to get back to that optimal state. 
we're, we're saying, I just need to hustle through this. I just need to grind through this. I'm grinding my way to profits. And yeah, there's seasons where we might need to do that during a big launch or, you know, you got a big deadline coming up. Like there's seasons, but if that's how you're operating every single day, you can never hustle and grind your way to a better life. You simply can't. So if your goal is more profits, you must first focus on performance. If your goal is more profits, more money, more points on the scoreboard, you have to focus on performance. So let's talk about the number one thing you can do to get into that optimal peak performance state where you are sustaining your energy, you're sustaining your level of performance, you're bringing your A game, you're competing at your highest level, it's sleep. Got to start there. And you're like, Greg, like sleep? Seriously, this is what we're talking about today? I, I, I need to know the latest webinar funnel or like I, teach me like the tactic that's going to bring. Like I guarantee that if you change your sleep routines, change your sleep habits to some of the things that we're going to talk about today, you will have no problem executing on the tactics that you need to execute that are going to put more points on the scoreboard. Sleeping your way to make more profits. That's what we're talking about. And yes, I do want you to sleep your way to make more profits because missing sleep, it sounds great when you hear, you know, Grant Cardone or somebody on social media saying like, you know, you got to hustle, buddy. You got to grind. You can sleep when you die, but your lack of sleep is actually killing you. It is taking years off of your life because sleep is where all the good stuff happens. And I get it. Like I was young at, you know, I'm still kind of young, but when I was younger in my twenties, like I had that mentality of like, I'll just, I can sleep when I die. Like, I, you know, but like now optimizing my sleep allows me to wake up and allows me to be more energized, it allows me to be more alive, it allows me to be in my A game, it allows me to bring the energy for you guys here on this training today because I'm making sleep a priority. Your lack of sleep is causing aging skin. Like if you're doing videos, a lot of stuff that we teach with videos, the ambitious video planner and our uh, you know virtual video producer program, like if you have aging skin and you have bags under your eyes and like you're not gonna be motivated to get on camera and, you know, do, do people want to watch the person that looks like the walking dead? The answer is no. But when you optimize your sleep, you look better. Your skin looks better. You like just, you have this vibrancy that comes off of you. That's who people want to do business with. People that exude vibrancy, not people that exude the walking dead, right? It increases your appetite. If it increases your appetite, most of us make the wrong choices with our food. And therefore we're putting ourselves deeper and deeper into that empty tank versus into adding more energy into our life. It lowers our libido. It decreases our activity. You know it when you wake up in the morning, you're groggy. Like you don't want to do anything. Now I'm going to skip the workout. I'm going to skip the thing that I really needed to do. It decreases our ability to want to do these activities. It slows our reaction time down. And if it slows our reaction time down, well, that's the objections that we're getting on sales calls. That's the problem. That's the fire that's coming into our inbox. And it's slowing our ability to react to these things, which means that we're probably going to make poor decisions when we do react to these things. It's not going to be the best way to react to these things. We're going to, you know, when an employee comes to us with a problem, we're going to bark at them as opposed to trying to figure out the best way to make our business better to put more points on the board, to turn the situation into something that becomes more profitable for our business in the long term. It shortens our attention. Our attention is already short. Now we're making it shorter with a lack of sleep. It impairs our memory and our learning, our ability to make connections between different things in our life and in our brain. It worsens our mood. Like you're groggy and you're probably groggy until you get that morning coffee into your hands. Like what if you didn't need that coffee to feel great? You get that coffee because you love coffee. And trust me, I love my coffee, but I don't wanna have to drink the coffee to make my mood more beneficial to the people around me and to myself. I want the coffee to be like, wow, I just love my morning coffee. It puts pressure on your heart, taking years away from your life. It weakens your immune system. So we wanna sleep our way to more profits. Let's change this. Let's do something better for ourselves. And how we do that is we start by setting our sleep and our wake time. This was the absolute biggest game changer when it came to sleep for me, is that I set a sleep time and I set a wake time. I'm in bed every night at 9.30 and I wake up every day at 5.20. It now has trained my brain, has trained my body that, hey, he's going to sleep at this time. Let's start working on repairing all that stuff and making those connections and improving the memory and getting the recovery down because we know he's going to wake up at 5.20. So let's get all of this in. It, it creates constraints and deadlines for my brain to recover. But if you're waking up at seven one day and 6.15 another day and 8.30 the next day, like your brain doesn't know like when you're going to wake up. So it doesn't know how to optimize all the things that it's trying to do when you sleep. So wake up, 
Start by waking up at the same time every day. Then start by going to bed at the same time every day. It's easier to start waking up at the same time every day than it is to go to bed at the same time every day. I know that because I have kids. We have baseball. Like right now I'm filming this. We're on spring break. Like the sleep time, you know, it moves a little bit. But I still wake up at the same time every day. 5.20 a.m. every day. Start waking up at the same time every day. You'll train your body. It'll start to know how to best optimize your recovery so that you can perform at your optimal state as often as possible. The other thing, and this is probably the most eye-opening thing that you can do, is, is to track your sleep. We know that what we measure improves. If you are looking at your sleep tracking on a daily basis, it is eye-opening. Like, it is literally eye-opening. And uh, I, you know I, I, how, we, how I track my sleep, I use a Whoop band. You can use something like an Aura Ring or if you have an Apple Watch. Like There's so many ways to track your sleep now. And I use the Whoop. And every day... I open it up and it like sends this little like a uh, message to my phone and it says, hey, your sleep is ready to be analyzed. Check it out. And I, I click and I can see like last night, not my best night. Still woke up 520 in the morning, uh, but I only got six hours and 33 minutes of sleep. But now I'm tracking my sleep, right? So I spent six hours and 55 minutes in bed. It's not about the amount of time that you're in bed. It's the amount of sleep that you get. And then how much, you know, how, what different stages were you in when you sleep? all makes a big difference. And so what I do is I aim for seven, eight hours of sleep. Last night I was off, right? Not time in bed, but actual sleep. I was 27 minutes off my minimum last night. Not great. But then I also look to focus on the stages of sleep that I'm in. Because if I only got six hours and 33 minutes, but I can optimize the amount of time that I was in REM and deep sleep, I can still perform at my peak the next day. And so last night I spent two hours and 30 minutes of those six hours and 33 minutes in REM sleep. I spent 47 minutes in deep sleep. I like to get 90 minutes of deep sleep. So my deep sleep was a little off, but my REM was way up last night, two hours and 30 minutes. That's why I'm able to bring the energy in this video for you here today. It's because I'm focused on these things. I'm looking at, and now how can I improve? How can I make sure that I get to bed on time tonight so that I get back in that zone? At the end of the day, cutting sleep needs to be your last resort. There is no piece of technology, there is no supplement, there is no hack, there is no like super food that you can eat that will make you feel better and more optimized than getting quality sleep. Nothing. So, was that cool, right? That was just sleep. And if you just tackle sleep, you will start to feel better. You will start to bring your A game and I know, I will guarantee that if you fix some of the issues that you have sleeping, the fatigue that you have from lack of sleep, you will make more money. And it's a weird correlation. You're like, man, like Greg, seriously, like I just watched this whole video and you're like, just like sleep better? Yeah, you'll make more money. You will make more money. You will make more profits. You will perform more optimally. You will get more done. You will focus on the tasks that actually drive points on the scoreboard if you sleep better. But I bet you want some more profit-producing performance activities, right? Like, you, let's, go, let's do some more of these. Well, let's do some rapid-fire ones real quick. One of my favorites is to plan your day out the night before. And I resisted this for the longest time. I had so many coaches telling me to do this. So many amazing people that had be, you know, the, the results and the outcomes that I wanted for my business all told me to do this. And I was like, nah, I'm not going to do it. No, nope, not going to. Man, I will tell you, planning your day out the night before. And then bullet point number two, making sure that everything on that to-do list, everything that I have to do today ties back to my biggest ambitions. My ambitions is my big mission for my life, my big goal for my life, uh, both in my business and in my life. And so everything that I do is black and white. Does this activity help me get closer to the ambition that I have for myself? Yes or no? And then I do it sequentially. So what is thing one that I need to do? Thing two, thing three. Today's to-do list, you know, that I planned out last night, you know, there's silly stuff on there. There's wake up at 520. A, that like now I get to check that off, off the list. You know, the second thing uh, was read something about high performance. It was get a workout in. Uh, it's now put together the profit paradox slides, which I did earlier. Then it's record profit paradox. I'm doing all of these things before I check email, before I check social media, before I do a, I jump on calls, before this is the biggest activities that I can do to move my business forward because it's the biggest thing I can do to help make an impact in your life. And if I do that, well, then maybe at some point you'll want to check out one of my programs. You'll check out Edge. You'll you know join our virtual video producer program. You'll learn more about the 30-day challenge that we have in just a second. So 
I plan my day out the night before and I do it sequentially so that when I woke up this morning, I open up, I use Evernote, I woke up, you know, and it said today, here's what I need to do. And I just do it in order and I knock out everything on the list and then I win the day. And if I win the day, every day, I'm gonna win the week. And if I win the week, every week, I'm gonna win the month. And if I win every month, I'm gonna win the year. And I am going to reach all of my dreams, my goals, and my ambitions. Another profit-producing performance activity is to create start and end times of your workday. This creates constraints. I have to get all my work done by X time. So for me, it's 10 to 5. So uh, I don't do any calls, anything uh, with clients, anything until 10 o'clock. And then I end at 5 o'clock so that I can be with my family. I can have dinner. I can do all of those things. Those constraints force me to get more done. It forces me to produce more prolific work because I have a deadline. It's very similar to tricking your brain how you go on vacation and you could do like two weeks worth of work in like three days because you have that constraint. So put constraints on every single one of your days. It's going to force you to get more done. It's going to force you to level up. It's going to force you to perform more optimally. Motivation. I've been talking a lot about motivation lately in a lot of my programs and with my coaching clients because... People think that they just wake up motivated. They think that I just wake up motivated. Couldn't be further from the truth. I wake up so many days, I ain't motivated to do anything but stay in bed and watch some sports center. What creates motivation is motion and movement. The reason why at a Tony Robbins seminar, you're so motivated is because you created motion and movement. You bought a, you bought a ticket. You jumped on an airplane. You got to the hotel. You went to the, the conference room. Tony's making you jump up and down. That creates the motivation. Then when you get home, you're like, oh, I'm not as motivated as I was in the events because you didn't do anything today. You didn't create any motion or movement. Go out and exercise, go for a walk, go and cook, go, go do something that creates motion. The reason why I do these types, like recording this video first thing in the morning is this creates so much, like I am so motivated right now than before I started. When I started doing this video, like I was like, oh man, I got to film this video today. Even though I love teaching and training, now I'm motivated. Now when I jump on my sales calls, now when I jump on the Zoom meetings that I have, when I have my team meeting this afternoon, I'm going to bring it because motion created my motivation for the day. If you're not motivated, it's because you haven't done anything to get you into that state of motivation. Find your thing. We talk about this a lot, and we're gonna do a lot of this in uh, the 30-day challenge that's coming up, is how to find and reverse engineer the things, the motion and the movement that creates motivation for you. Because it's different for everybody. And then finally, optimize your environment. If right now you're watching this in a room and it's pitch black and there's no windows and you're not getting any life around you, it's very hard for you to, to, to produce profit-producing activities. It is very hard for you to perform optimally. If instead you have motivational posters and trinkets and things around you that lift you up, that you just, you know, you, you maybe you had a bad bad call or, you know, some a negative email just came in or, you know, someone said something, you know, mean to you on Facebook on a, in a comment or something and you turn around and you got your vision statement up on the wall and you got a trinket that reminds you of who it is that you are and who it is that you want to be, your environment helps you to get into that state, to perform more optimally, right? So optimize your environment. Look around. Is your computer too small? Does it not fit your hands? Do, you, do your hands achy because of like what you're typing on every single day? Do you, are your eyes bleeding by looking at the computer? Like f That's hurting your ability to be your best. Eliminate those constraints. Eliminate the things that are hurting your environment that is costing you profits in your business because you're not able to do the tasks that you need to do to make the money, to put the points on the scoreboard. And look, we're just scratching the surface today, right? This is such a fun video to create, but we're really just scratching the surface that will allow you to unlock your ability to perform at your peak. That's what we wanna do, right? We wanna perform optimally for as long as we possibly can. We want to create sustainable performance in our life. And if we do that, then we can produce legendary work because all entrepreneurs, all business owners, all we do is we produce. We produce products, we produce programs, we produce content, we produce uh, you know, value into the world. And if we do that, well, then we can profit so that we can live our most ambitious life. You can't have profit without performance and without production. You simply can't. Because if you didn't produce anything today, an ad, a piece of content, a product, a, a sales call, like if you didn't produce anything today, you can't profit. And you can't produce legendary work. You can't produce your best stuff if you're performing with an empty tank. You simply can't do it. So you have to perform to produce, to profit. That is the profit paradox. You are just showing up trying to profit. 
And I get it. We need money. We need cash flow. We need all of that stuff. Great. But if you're running on empty and you're not producing things in your business, you can't profit. You simply can't. That's why we put together the Ambitious 30 Day Challenge. And you can't buy it today. There's no buy button, nothing like that. But this is a challenge that I've been putting together for the last, uh, it's about three, four months now that we've been putting this together. I'm so excited for this. And in this challenge, I am going to help you to do more in the next 30 days than you did in the last 12 months. Whether the last 12 months were great, whether the last 12 months were the worst 12 months of your life, or you're somewhere in between, you will do more in the next 30 days than you did in the last 12 months. It's broken into four weeks. Week number one is all about defining your ambitions and getting your mind ready for you to become the person that you need to be to get the outcome that you wanna get. Week number two is all about performing at your best, performing optimally, finding that peak performance state and sustaining it for a long period of time. Week number three is all about producing legendary work. How do you take the things that you know, the things that you do and turn it into output that the world can consume and say, you know what? They're the best in the world at that. And then finally, we're gonna spend the last week teaching you how to profit in a way that will allow you to live your ambitious life. And I'm bringing some of my friends around. And uh, the great news is I have an amazing partner. His name's Nick Nanton, and he's produced documentaries and done video work with some of the biggest entrepreneurs, high performance leaders, personal development experts, people like Jack Canfield, like Richard Branson, like Brian Tracy, like Rudy from the movie Rudy, like Lisa Nichols, like Jay Abraham. And I've brought them along, alongside myself in this 30 day challenge. And it's going to be so, 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 so much fun. Uh, We have put together 100 30-day challenge kits. Just 100 of these 30-day challenge kits. And I want you to get the first opportunity to get your hands on the ambitious 30-day challenge kit. So what I want you to do today is I want you to join the early bird list and be the first to get notified because these will sell out quick. And when you join the early bird list today, I am totally hooking you up absolutely free. Just for joining the early bird list, you're going to get instant access to a training that I call the Velocity Principles. These are the nine things that I use in my life to create things at warp speed. So if you've had something on your to-do list, you wanna write a book, you wanna launch a podcast, you wanna start doing videos, you wanna you know, launch a new side hustle, whatever it is, but you keep putting it off, the Velocity Principles will knock down that wall and get you started at warp speed. It will get you from like today I wanna do this to tomorrow coming to reality. The second bonus training that I wanna give to you It's from my main man, Craig Ballantyne, who was in the studio with me a few years ago. And we created this training all about aligning our values and our vision. And when we do that, he's going to show you how you can accomplish your 10-year goals this year. To compress the things that you want to do far out in the future and get them done now. To stop waiting for your best life and to start living your best life today. Never shared this training outside of Craig's private clients. And we are going to hook you up with both of those today when you go to Ambitious. 30daychallenge.com. When you go there, you can uh, join the early bird list. Join that early bird list. You'll get instant access to this and you will also be the first to get notified when we go live with the ambitious 30 day challenge to get your hands on one of the 100 exclusive 30 day challenge welcome boxes and the 30 days of training featuring myself, Jack Canfield, Brian Tracy, Lisa Nichols, Rudy, Jay Abraham, Richard Branson. It is gonna be one heck of a good time and you will do more in the next 30 days and didn't last 12 months. All you do is join the early bird list. Go to ambitious30daychallenge.com. Check it out now. I hope that you enjoyed this video. You found some things that are really going to help you to perform at your best, to bring your A game, to no longer be running on empty, showing up on game day and just hoping that you win the game. Let's stack the deck in our favor. Let's perform optimally so that we can produce legendary work and so you can create more profits in your life. Thanks for watching The Profit Paradox, and I will talk to you guys real soon.